Hello everyone and welcome to part one JavaScript basics. In this lecture we're going to be going to our browser Google Chrome and then opening up our console and walking through just the very basics of JavaScript. Things such as basic data types and a few basic methods. I'm going to jump to my browser now to get started. Okay here I am at my browser. I'm just at a new empty tab and I've also gone incognito to make sure I don't get any JavaScript alerts if I'm logged into Gmail. And I would suggest you do the same if you're using a Gmail account. But what you're going to do is anywhere on the page, right click, and then go all the way down to where it says inspect. Click on that. And you should see something like this, probably not as zoomed in as mine. So you'll, more likely you'll see something that looks like this. Then you can click on console and you should see the console here for your browser. And this is where we can directly type in JavaScript code and see how the browser interprets it and executes it. Let's start off with the hello world of JavaScript, which is an alert. So we call alert, which is a function, and then you pass in a string. So a string is going to start off with a set of quotes. Here we have double quotes, and then whatever string you want to do. So in our case, it's going to be something like hello world. And you can see I've actually typed this before, which is why the JavaScript console is kind of helping me out there. But I'm going to hit enter, and we should see a little pop-up. And here at the top of the page, I see new tab says hello world. And there's a little click here that says prevent this page from creating additional dialogues. Uh, do not check that box, otherwise you won't be able to see any more of your alerts. So then click OK. And we get undefined here, and we'll be explaining a lot more about function input and output and how that all works. For now, congratulations, you've written your very first line of JavaScript code. Let's continue on by talking about basic data types. So first, before we actually start that, I want to show you how you can write a comment in JavaScript. And a comment in JavaScript is just two forward slashes, and then anything beyond this, so anything here is a comment. And if I hit enter here, basically nothing's going to be executed because that was all a comment. So right now, let's start off with basic data types. Okay, the first basic data type are numbers. And numbers can be integers, such as 10. Floating point numbers, maybe like 20.2, which means it has a decimal. And even things like negative numbers, so negative 13.4 or something. Note that JavaScript, unlike some other languages, treat, treats these all the same as numbers. So regardless if it's a floating point with a decimal, a whole integer, or a negative number, they all are treated as numbers in JavaScript. There's no distinction between them. At least for our very basic use cases, we don't need to worry about that. Then next, there are strings. So strings are basically strings wrapped in quotes. So we've already seen one. We've seen hello world. So here we have the string hello world, and it gets output. And then we can also even wrap digits. But note here the difference. If I wrap this number 10 in quotes, it now becomes a string instead of an actual number. And we'll talk a lot more also about how JavaScript compares strings like this to a number like this. It's unlike some other languages, so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Okay, so those are strings, and up next I want to show you Booleans. So if you haven't encountered Booleans from other programming languages, they're basically logical values that can stand for true or false. And in JavaScript, it's the lowercase true or all lowercase false, and those are the booleans. And there's two more things I want to show you, which are undefined and null. And we'll talk again a lot more about these in a future lecture, but I just want you to be aware that undefined and null are not exactly the same thing, but they are available as basic data types in JavaScript. Okay, let's take a step back and focus in on numbers. So those were over here in blue syntax highlighting numbers. And we can actually use JavaScript as a basic calculator. But before we do that, I want to show you how you can clear your console. To clear your console, just type in clear, and then close parentheses at the end of that. Hit enter, and the console will be cleared for you. Okay, so JavaScript as a basic calculator can do addition. So I can say things like 2 plus 2, and you see it responds 4. I can do subtraction, 5 minus 1, multiplication, 3 times 2, that's an asterisk for multiplication there. I can do division, for instance, 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. 
And note what happens if I do 2 divided by 5, it gives me 0 0.4. Other programming languages sometimes won't actually give you the decimal amount. JavaScript does do true division here. So 2 divided by 5 does give you the correct answer of 0 0.4. Then if we want to do exponents, that's two sets of asterisks. So for instance, if I want to do 2 to the power of 4, that's going to be asterisk asterisk 4. And then that equals 16, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the power of 4. And then the last mathematical operation, which you may or may not be familiar with, depending how new you are to programming, is what's known as the modulo or mod function, or really operation, it's not really a function. And basically what this does is it returns the remainder of a division. So for example, if I say 15 divided by 14 and hit enter, I get 1.07, etc. some very large decimal. But if I were to think about this in terms of remainder, I would know that 15 divided by 14 is 14 remainder 1. Now if I wanted some mathematical operation to only return that remainder, that can be shown as the mod operation or the modulo operation, which in most programming, programming languages it's shown as a percent sign. So 15 mod 14 returns 1 because it's 14 remainder 1. Let's show you another example. For instance, 6 mod 2 returns 0. And that's because 2 goes into 6 evenly 3 times. So 3 remainder 0. Now if I do something like 6 mod 4, I get remainder 2 because it's going to be 4 remainder 2 to get 6. So again, this mod, function, this mod operation just gives you back the remainder. Okay, so we discussed numbers and how to treat JavaScript using a basic calculator. Let's clear our console again. And now let's talk about strings and some very basic operations that you can do with strings for JavaScript. So strings are just sequences of characters and each element or character has an indexed position. So let's start with a string that just says Django is cool. And I can actually concatenate strings together and concatenate means just bring together. So I can say something like Django and I concatenate with plus is super cool. Hit enter and then I see Django is super cool. But look what happened here. On that concatenation, there's no space between Django and is because there was no space at the end of Django or at the beginning of is there. So I'm, if I want to concatenate these two strings to make sense, I can put a space there before is and then when I concatenate those two together, both the plus sign, I see Django is super cool. So far, pretty basic stuff. If I want to grab the actual length of a string, I call the length attribute. So I say something like Django, and then call dot length off of that string. And you can see that the console actually helps you out with some autocomplete. And then here I can see there are six elements or six characters in this sequence, which is the string. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. And then we can also check if white space counts by saying something like x space x dot length, and you see we get three. So white space also counts. It's going to count those spaces. Now there's also escape characters in strings that are really common. For example, if I say something like hello backslash n starts a new line and then hit enter here. I can see that this special escape character stands for beginning a new line. So hello, and then I start a new line with backslash n, and then everything else goes on a new line. Another escape character is tab. So I can say hello backslash t for tab. Give me a tab. And this will insert a tab, essentially just four spaces there. And then finally, I can also do quotes. So I can say hello and then I will say quotes backslash hit enter and this is just a way to input quotes inside of a JavaScript string. So let me make that probably a little more clear by not using the word quotes there but it's a backslash quote and then I can say something like jelly. And I can see that the double quote is now inside the string. And the reason you would need an escape character 
is if you didn't have that backslash there for the escape, JavaScript would think that you wanted to just end the actual string right there at that first double quote. But instead, if you want to escape it and actually have quotes inside, you can use that escape character. So that's useful if you're trying to say something like, she said, quote, blah, 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 end quote, and then finish off the string. All right. Then finally, I want to talk about actually indexing individual characters or elements. So indexing starts at zero. So if I have hello, and I want to grab a certain character off of that string based off of its index location, for instance, I want to grab h, well, that starts at index zero. So if I do hello, and then with square brackets and put a zero there, I get h back. Okay, before we continue on, let's see a few more examples of indexing with a string. So if I have a string again, hello, and I want to grab the letter O from this, well, I just have to count starting with index zero. So it's going to be H is zero, E is one, the first L is two, the second L is three, and then the O is at index four. And there it returns O. And we're going to learn a lot more about indexing strings later on, but what I want you to do is take a random string, maybe something like look at the dog, and then see if you can, through indexing calls, grab the letter D from this. So pause the video, see what number you have to provide to grab the letter D, just to practice. Okay, so hopefully you're able to get it. Let's see, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And there's the letter D. Okay, now let's continue on by talking about variables. I'm going to clear the console. And let's talk about variables in JavaScript. So the general form of variables in JavaScript looks something like this. You say the keyword var. Then you have the variable name, and then you're going to say it's equal to whatever you want the actual value to be, and then a semicolon to let JavaScript know that you're done. And JavaScript is actually really flexible these days on what has to end with a semicolon and what doesn't have to end with a semicolon. For almost all things now, you actually don't need the semicolon anymore, but we'll keep putting it into place and we'll talk about it a little more in a future lecture. But that's the very basic format, so let's actually get some practice. I'm going to make a variable called bank account. And unlike some other programming languages, JavaScript uses camel case. And what camel case means is if you have multiple words in a variable name, the next word that you put in is going to have a capital letter. So we see bank, next word has a capital letter. And if I wanted to add something else to this, maybe the city it was in, I would then put another capital letter, put another capital letter, etc. So that's what it looks like. So we have bank account. And then I'm going to say is equal to 100, semicolon. So now I have a variable bank account, which means if I actually call bank account, I'll get back the number or value I assigned to it. So then let's make a variable called deposit. And we'll set it equal to 50. And now let's actually do some logic with this. So I will say variable total is equal to my account plus my deposit. And it looks like it needs to be my bank account, so sorry about that. Bank account plus deposit, there it is. So we saw we had an error here, account is not defined because I never defined something called account, I only defined something called bank account. So now here I see variable total is equal to bank account plus deposit. So if I show my total, I get 150, 100 plus 50. Okay. So let's show a couple more examples of variables. I'm going to clear my console. Let's say I create a variable called greeting, and this one's going to be a string now. I'll say something like, welcome back, colon, and then I'm going to make another variable called name, and you should go ahead and input your name here. I'll put in Jose, and then we're going to say an alert. So we should see a prompt come up. And I'm gonna do greeting plus, remember we can concatenate strings, name. Hit enter, and now I see it says, welcome back, Jose, on the very top here. Great. So if I get a variable, such as var, and I don't ever define it, so let's do that, something like 
my variable and I hit enter, I get undefined. So undefined means you created something, but you never actually defined it. A null, on the other hand, so for instance, if I make a variable called bonus and assign it to the keyword null, that's going to be actually nothing that you set. And that's really the difference between null and undefined. Undefined means something was created, but it was never actually defined. So this variable exists, but it was never defined in the case of my variable. Null, on the other hand, means that you're actually setting nothing to this variable on purpose. So here we have something that's undefined, created, but never defined. In the case of this variable called bonus, we actually assigned it nothing or null. So it is defined as null instead of just being undefined. Now, don't worry too much right now that all of these actions output undefined. That basically just means that there was nothing to output for all the lines of code that we were writing. Now, before we end this lecture, I wanna show you just a few basic JavaScript methods that we talked about. We already know alert, but just to reiterate, alert is going to alert and pop up something in the browser. So I will say alert, hey, hit enter and it alerts up here. And we'll be using those a lot to check our work later on in this section of the course. The other thing I wanna show you is actually outputting something to the console. So a lot of the stuff we've been doing has never been outputting things to the console. If I wanna output something to the console, I can use console.log and then whatever I wanna output. So let's say, hey, I'm in the console. Let's hit enter. We see here it now says, hey, I'm in the console. And that's how you output something to the console. And then finally, we have prompt. So prompt is an actual key. So I will say, let's start off with just prompt. And we'll say, enter something. Hit enter. And at the very top of the page, it'll say, enter something. And here you can just enter whatever, hit OK. And we see the output here. If you want to save this as a variable, you can do something like var age is equal to prompt, and then we'll say enter your age. Hit enter, and up here it says enter your age, so we can enter our age. Let's say we're 90 years old, lived a good life, hit OK. And now it'll say undefined, but if I call age again, it gives me back 90. And note that it gives it back to me as a string. Okay, so we covered a lot here, but it was all the basics. Hopefully this didn't seem too complicated. I know it's a lot of stuff right now, so if you need a review, you can always check out the JavaScript basics.js script that's under the JavaScript level one folder, so you can actually go and practice on your own the various commands that we did in this lecture. Okay, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next lecture where we're going to be continuing our discussion of the basics of JavaScript. Hello everyone, and welcome to part two, Connecting JavaScript. We learned quite a bit in the last lecture, so let's take a little bit of a break and just show you how you can connect a JavaScript file, which is a .js extension file, to an HTML file. We're going to open up Atom and the browser for this, so let's hop over to them now. Okay, so here I have Atom Text Editor open, and in the Atom Text Editor, I have two files, an empty HTML file called example.html, and a file called myscript.js, which is also empty at this time. So what I will begin doing is typing out HTML, just so we get some basic HTML here. I'm gonna put heading one and say something like, welcome to your bank. Let's save that and check that it's connected to our browser by refreshing the page, and here we see welcome to your bank. Now let's show you how you can actually connect a JavaScript file to your HTML file. And this works with the script tag. So up here, we can type script. And inside of the script tag, the open tag, I'm going to write src for source, and then actually input the source of my script. And the source for my script is just myscript.js. And it goes in quotes. And then we have a close in tag. So it looks like this. And you can actually use Atom to automate this. So if I begin to type script here and I hit enter, you'll actually get this auto pop up here. You don't have to really worry about type at this point in time. So you could just use that as well. 
for the autocomplete, but basically what we're looking for here is just a script tag where the first open script tag has the SRC or the source and pointing to your .js file. And right now these are both in the same directory, so all I have to do is provide the name. Now let's actually add some stuff to the .js file so we can clarify and check that it's actually working. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is in this JavaScript file, I'll put an alert that says, welcome to your bank. And I will save that. And let's refresh this page. And we should now, upon refreshing, see an alert that says, this page says, welcome to your bank. And we'll hit OK. And note over here in the HTML that I'm calling my script before I'm calling anything else in the body. So the reason that this appeared blank for a second is because I was calling my script before I called anything in my body. And we'll discuss later on what script placement and where it should go has an effect on your HTML. But let's continue on with this JavaScript file. We'll continue on with our bank example. I'm going to create a variable called deposit. And that's going to be a prompt saying how much would you like to deposit today? Question mark. And then let's say alert. You've deposited. And then we're going to concatenate the actual deposit amount. And then I'm also going to do a console log. So I will say console.log. And we'll put something like you are a cool person. So let's save that, refresh our page to reload this JavaScript. And now it says, welcome to your bank. We hit OK. And then it says, how much would you like to deposit today? Let's put in 100, click OK. We get an alert. It says, you've deposited 100. Now we also had that console log. So I can check by right clicking, saying inspect. And here, on the console, I see you are a cool person. Great. So that's really all there is as far as connecting a JavaScript file to an HTML file. Again, the main thing I want you to get out of this is that there's a script tag and you can connect it to your JavaScript source. And then whatever JavaScript you have here will be uploaded whenever you refresh the page or when you actually just visit the page for the first time. All right. Thanks everyone. And I will see you at the next lecture.